because they discovered lots of helium in these zircons, which they should, we shouldn't have been there because they were so old that all the helium should have leaked out. And this was published by Gentry and his co-workers in 1982 in Geophysical Research Letters. And you can go and look it up. And it's there. It's got all the data and all this helium in the zircons. These are quite small zircons. We'll have a look at it in a bit more detail in a minute. Uh, the zircon crystals are actually quite small. You only find them under a microscope. So you, you grind up your rock sample and you take out the zircons and you use a microscope to pick them out because they're only 50 to 75 microns uh, in diameter. And there's a photograph of what they would look like. <clears throat> so what they've discovered basically was large amounts of retained helium. In fact, they call them phenomenally large amounts of retained helium because there just shouldn't have been any helium left because the decay rate of uranium is so slow that all the helium would more or less disappear as it was being produced. So the question was, why is this? And this, this information has been around for 20, uh, more 20 years now, 80, 40, uh, 20, 30, nearly 30 years. But some scientists uh, who were interested in, in various uh, radiometric dating methods followed up this information and said, okay, there's helium in there. How long would it take for that helium to leave the zircon? Because that will give us an independent measure of the age of the crystals. We've got one measure from the radiometric dating, one and a half billion years. We can also get a measure from the helium leakage from the crystal. But we need to know how fast the helium comes out of the crystal. And then we can make some assumptions about uh, the ages of these crystals and fit the numbers into the equations and come out with some predictions. And this is what they did. A team led by a guy called Russell Humphreys, they, they calculated on the basis of the known amounts of helium and... They, they assume two ages. They said, let's assume the creation model, 6,000 years, and let's assume the evolutionary model, the 1.5 billion years. And let's plot out the rate of diffusion of helium through these crystals as a function of temperature, because the rate at which they, the helium comes out depends on temperature. In fact, the crystal's cold enough, the helium won't come out. But if it's, the hotter it is, the faster it's going to come out. So you get actually curves here, which I've shown uh, an example of, of helium diffusion rate or diffusivity against temperature assuming a certain age to account for the amount of helium you see. And this is the assumption. Let's assume they're 6,000 years old. This is the kind of line you get. Here's the line you get if you assume they're 1.5 billion years old. And that's all very a standard methodology. Nothing, nothing magic or mysterious here. Nothing unconventional. Just using conventional maths and physics. <clears throat> and this is what they did, and then they said, well, okay, let's get some zircons, and let's actually measure the diffusion rate, the diffusivity of the helium in the zircon, which you can do. Uh, before I move on, just to point out, there's a 100,000-fold difference in the answers you get, depending on whether you take the 6,000 years or the 1.5 billion. So very easy to tell the difference experimentally if, you could, if you've got a reliable method. And there's, can be no, there's no sort of fudging the issue here. So what they, what they did, they got some zircons and they actually did the measurements. They measured the actual rate of diffusion of helium in zircon crystals. And we've got the same graphs here, and here we have the actual experimental data that they recovered when they did the experiment. And it fits the 6,000-year-old crystal theory. I mean, it's absolutely astonishing. For me, it's astonishing. I don't know whether it's astonishing for you, but that is amazing. That is empirical laboratory science, and it with, with standard methods, and it comes out with an answer which says 6,000 years. So that, that data is not going to go away either. So from the, this zircon data, which for me is one of the most exciting pieces of evidence for a young Earth, basically the diffusion rates confirm a numerical prediction based on the reported retentions, what you actually observed in the helium, and a, a, an assumed young age. So they tested the theory and they got the answer, yes, the theory works. And the measure rates of retention for zircons actually give a helium diffusion age of about 6,000 years, which contradicts <coughs> by a long way the age of 1.5 billion years based on nuclear decay products from the same zircons using uranium-lead method, which is one of the accepted methods for proving that the Earth is billions of years old. So something is going on here. So basically you've got to make a choice. Am I going to go with one or the other, uh, or am I going to have to actually reevaluate all the data and all the, 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 uh, all the assertions that the Earth is billions of years old? And to be quite honest, I prefer to say, well, my Bible says one thing, here's some science which supports my Bible, here's some science which doesn't, uh, how do I choose between the two? Well, there's no actual ob objective way to choose between the two. You're up to you, it's up to you to make up your mind. So really, 
we've looked at uh, lots of different bits of evidence and I've tried to show you that a lot of this evidence supports the idea that the Earth is young and I really want to finish up with uh, a short history of the world as I understand it from the Bible but also supported by a fair amount of science. So the creation of the Earth is in six days about 6,000 years ago. That's what the Bible says. That's what Genesis 1 says. That's what I believe. And I don't find that I'm actually committing uh, intellectual suicide by doing that because there's scientific evidence that supports that. And I believe, too, there's a worldwide flood of about 4,500 years ago. Now, we talked about the, the ancient civilization. Some of those dates go beyond that. But again, there's a, there's a bit of debate about where the dates fit. But the ballpark date is about right. And uh, there would have been a lot of plate tectonic movements after the flood, which uh, is consistent with modern geology, and I don't have any problem with that. All I do is uh, I would say that the time scale is a lot different from what we're told. And one ice age about 100, 000, 100 years after the flood. So there's a lot of information there. And uh, human beings killed the last dinosaurs during the Middle Ages. And dinosaurs and human beings did exist side by side. So that's all I have to say. Uh, no doubt there might be a few questions. <coughs> so Paul's going to come out here and defend me. 